Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm an astrophysicist with the American Museum of Natural History right here in New York City. Uh, and you are in my office right now. Okay. What is Star Talk? Star Talk was a radio show that, uh, a successful radio show, has been going for five years. And the first time it jumped species was to podcast and it became a highly uh, successful podcast. I can quantify that because iTunes ranks podcasts by their popularity. And just a few weeks ago, Star Talk was the number one downloaded podcast. That fluctuates depending on when they make the measurement and what show we post versus other podcasts. But there was that one moment where we were the number one downloaded out of all, in all categories. So we were all quite happy about that. But for me, my first thought wasn't, oh, we're happy about it. It was, wow, there's this huge appetite for science out there that wasn't previously served. Why should a science show be number one? So that gave me a, a certain level of confidence that uh, the public is, A, underserved in science programming, B, has an appetite that previously was never recognized. So with its success as a podcast and a radio show, we were approached by National Geographic Channel after Cosmos. They liked the success of Cosmos, and they came to me and said, let's do some more TV. And that was like the wrong time to ask me because I was exhausted from doing 13 episodes of Cosmos. And, but then I said, you know, I'm already doing this radio show. Maybe you can just film that. As a minimum, they might just mount cameras on the wall and watch us do it in the sound studio. But perhaps it could be something a little more fleshed out than that. And that's ultimately what came to pass. So we've now filmed 10 episodes of Star Talk in the Hall of the Universe here. And National Geographic picked up another 10 episodes in the fall. It's a talk show on the universe where I am the host. When you're going up for... And my guests are hardly ever scientists. They're people hewn from pop culture. You've heard of them, typically. They could be a politician, a, a performer, a singer, an actor. You when you go back yeah. And well, my conversation with them is about all the way yeah, science has impacted line, their lives or their livelihoods. Time, like a, uh, as a and resource, the viewer like then gets to see commodity. how fundamentally exactly. I, I just, blended science yeah, is to that every that walk of life. Because science is not some edifice that you can walk around or avoid and say, I was never good at science, but I'm good at this. So let me lean this way instead of that. You will learn that science threads through everything in our modern lives. And I have a co-host who's a professional stand-up comedian. And that brings some levity to the banter. And plus, I think the universe is a hilarious place anyway. And so it is the tapestry we weave in that hour of programming that is what the viewer receives. There's going to be another 10 episodes in the fall. Uh, can you give us any, any sneak previews, any hints of uh, who else you might be talking to? Uh, so we're compiling the list of who we'll be interviewing for the fall. Uh, but no, we're, we're not settled on how that will, uh, what that will be. We've got a few in the can, but no, I'll, I'll save it for the fall. <laughs> well, I did hear that you have some, some dream guests. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, one of my dream guests is any head of state of any country. <laughs> because heads of states in the 21st century... Uh, heads of state, the plural goes in the heads. H heads of state uh, in the 21st century are going to have to care about science and technology in some way or another. And whether or not they themselves are particularly fluent in it, they'll have to know if they're not fluent and know how to reach to people who are. So in that regard, any person running for high office would be an ideal guest. Uh, I'd love to have President Obama, you know, just to see how heads of state think, because you cannot sit in denial of what role science and technology will play in the health, wealth, and security of the future of a nation and, in fact, the future of the world. Late night's a, a very competitive arena, obviously. You're going up against you know, all kinds of names, Stephen Colbert, uh, David Letterman for a while, uh, all these other names. Uh, do you... By the way, we, when it was announced that we're appearing in the 11 o'clock slot, which is when John Stewart appears with The Daily Show. A few weeks later, he announced he was stepping down. <laughs> I'm sure it's coincidence, but uh, it, was, uh, it was fun to joke about that fact. Well, let's be real. But it's, a, it's a competitive time slot. The, the, the after the primetime 
shows are done and the, the spate, the portfolio of talk shows begins, we are definitely in that mix. But in the, ever, in the era of DVRs, maybe that's an irrelevant concern. We're a completely different species. Even though we occupy the same time slots, we're the same category of time slots, we're different species. Yes, I have pop culture people, as do they. We'll have comedy, as do they. So we have that. The difference is, our goal at the end of the day is for you to be joyfully educated. Whereas the goal of these other shows, not to speak for them, but I think I can say, is to be joyfully entertained. And so maybe at the end, literally at the end of the day, you're picking. While I'm being entertained, do I want to learn something? Or do I just want to be entertained? I think that's the fork in the road that people will decide upon before they go to sleep at night. So you wouldn't be interested in, say, uh, cutting like a 30-second wrestling-style promo against Stephen Colbert, for instance. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Stephen Colbert. I don't know if, if Stephen Colbert is coming on at 11 o'clock or 11.30. 11.30. Yeah, I think he's 11.30. Um, I did get a, a phone call from his people. They might want me as an early guest on his show, and this might come up. Uh, but, uh, like I said, we live in modern times, and anyone who really wants to see it all, this shows up on their multi-channel recording DVR. <laughs>